Thank the Lord for another beautiful and blessed day. This beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And now we will rejoice and be so glad in it. And we want to give a great shout out to the YouTube family. From Papa JT down to Baby Brother Justice. And whoever else is looking at these videos. God bless you also. I want to go to the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. And talk about the Beatitudes. Seem like the Beatitudes is overlooked a lot of times in the Bible because you don't hear too many people talk about the Beatitudes. Now, we hear a lot about prosperity, but a lot of people think that prosperity is just money, and that's not the truth. It's gold. It goes way past money. The Beatitudes are very important to me because when Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, he talked about these Beatitudes. And what I love about them, they all start off with the word blessed. And the Beatitudes really show us how to be blessed and really show us how to live. But if you don't pick up and study, you won't know about the Beatitudes. Now, let's go to the Beatitudes, and I want to go through them one by one and kind of explain them. And I got my little screen up on my little, you know, way of teaching this. Now, the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And the first will say, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when we look at that word poor in spirit, it means to be humble. And when you think about the gifts and blessings that the Lord has stored upon, upon all of us, excuse me, we should be thankful and rejoicing every day. See, a lot of people are caught on their wants but not realizing that God has already blessed you with everything that you need. And poor in spirit means to be completely empty and open to the word of God. So many people, cups are not full right now. So many people are on milk trying to get to meat. Now, when you say poor in spirit, it doesn't mean that you don't know God. And when you have pride, <laughs> well, pride will bring misery. Pride brings anger. Pride will bring trying to get a, a revenge on people. But when I say humble, when you learn how to repent, when you are sorry for what you've done, when you are humble, you don't mind teaching others. And when you are humble, you don't mind being taught. So when we say poor in spirit, in so many words, we're going to say that is being humble. Oh, hallelujah. Let's move on. Now, we talk. Let's go to the second one. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be come. Mm. Now, if you are humble and appreciate, like I was saying, everything that God has done for you, then we grow in love and gratitude. Humble is a very important word, people. But we find out nowadays most people are not humble. They doing what they want to do. Some doing it to get credit. And some just not doing nothing at all. Mourning is also called like a blessing in this particular text to me. And when you do what's right, you remain humble. Now let's move on to the next one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, M-E-E-K. Another word people get confused because they think meek is being weak. Well, people, I'm going to tell you again, there wasn't nothing weak about Christ. And I'm glad that he died for our sins. And when you look at this word, see, this is one of my favorite Beatitudes right here. A humble person becomes meek. He becomes gentle and kind. And he overlooks what a lot of people do to him or her. See, when you are meek, you have that compassion. You have that love. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the spirit in this video. A person that's meek is self-control. And God loves that. But how many people are actually meek nowadays? Now, let's move to the next one. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Woo, I love this. Remember when the Lord destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because couldn't find nobody righteous. 
it's like nowadays, really, how many people are really righteous? See, if you hunger and thirst for material things, or lusting behind all kind of other sins, then you are in bad shape. That's why I say when Jesus told the devil, when Jesus was fasting 40 days and 40 nights out there in the wilderness, he told the devil that man does not live on bread alone. But every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father, the bread is, is that word right there that we're supposed to live, eat, sleep, and breathe that word so that we will not be deceived. Are you hungry spiritually for the word of God? Are you righteous can you be satisfied? Can you learn how to be content like Paul said in whatever state you are in? Mm. See, all these things go together in the word of God. You can tie them in together. Good God Almighty. Now, let's move on to the next one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Woo! Mercy. Mm. Love. Compassion. And they where it is, forgiveness toward your brother and your sister will bring you peace in all of your relationships. Whether you trying to find peace in your home, on your job, in the church, when you have compassion, when you have forgiveness, when you have love, you can move forward. When you have God, first of all, ahead of your life, and you're doing things the way God say do, it don't matter what somebody doing to you. You're going to love them and move on regardless and pray for them. That's all you can do anyway. Good God Almighty. Now, let's look at the corporal works of mercy. Feeding the hungry. Give drink to the thirsty. Clothe the naked. Share to the homeless. Comfort the in prison. Visit the sick. Bury the dead. This is how we're supposed to be, people. Remember when the Bible, when Jesus, uh, when the Bible also said, when you are throwing a gathering, invite in your family. No, not your family. It said, when you are throwing a gathering, invite in the sick. Invite in the poor. In other words, feed somebody you ain't never fed before. Clothe them. They need to take a shower. Let them take a shower. Remember when the Pharisee invited Jesus to the house. The Pharisee didn't do nothing for Jesus. Didn't even give Jesus a cup of water. Oh, but the sinful woman anointed Jesus' body. Good God Almighty. Let's move on to my favorite one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pure in heart. Y'all oftentimes real many men say, how is your heart posture? PP drawings leave it in the comment. How is your heart posture behind what you do? Moses, John, and Paul, Timothy, all say that no one can see God here on earth. But Jesus said, the pure of heart shall see God. To be pure in heart means to be free of all selfish intentions and self-seeking desires. Oh, what a beautiful goal. How many times have any of us performed and act perfectly free? I haven't. How many of us can be in pure love? An act of pure and selfishness. Oh, man. Not being selfish brings peace, brings happiness to us all. Are your, do you have a pure heart? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now let's move on. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Peacemakers. Not hell raisers. Peacemakers. Oh. Peacemaker, being peaceful, lives at peace, brings peace to others. How many hell raisers are inside of these churches? But when you are a peacemaker, you shall be called the children of God. Oh, how do you get this peace? Well, it comes from God. See, you can have all the money. You can have all the material things. But you can have all that and still don't have a peace of mind. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, this is the one don't nobody like to hear. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, we can go all into detail about that word, persecuted. People don't like to hear that word, persecuted on Christians. Y'all always hear me say Christians are being persecuted every day. 
persecuting is a, 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 a deep word. Jesus said many times that those who follow him will be persecuted. Well, aren't we following Christ? Some of us. Because if you are a Christian, newsflash, you will be persecuted. He said if they persecute me, they will persecute you and John. That's what he said. They stoned Stephen. They crucified Peter. Upside down. They beheaded Paul. Look what happened to James. Look what happened to Jesus. They lied on him. They beat him up. They put him on the cross. The Lord promised that those that suffer for his sake will be rewarded with the kingdom of heaven. But there's too many people wanting rewards right here. He said in Revelation, <laughs> his reward is with him. But we can't see that sometimes nowadays because most people are caught on this life. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, people, let's just take for a moment and look around. What do we see? Killing, stealing, robbing, jealousy, envy, prostitute, homosexuality, preachers stealing money from the church, church abuse, pulpit abuse, families versus families, diseases all over the land, man versus man, man getting wicked and wicked. If my people who are called by my name, uh-oh, I got to say it again, Pop. If they were over themselves, the other Beatitude was just talking about being humble, wasn't it, Pop? If they would humble themselves, seek my face, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then that's when they would hear from heaven. And I would even heal their land. Woo! That's such a powerful scripture. He said, if my people, God was talking about his people. How many of these be out of tubes do we actually live by? I got to get ready to get out of here because I got to get ready to go to church. I'm fired up this morning. I hope y'all woke up fired up. But I don't wait on Sunday to get fired up for the oh hallelujah. See, Sunday is not promised. The next second is not promised. The next day is not promised. Boy, you better give God the glory wherever you at right now if you're looking at this video. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, people. Somebody died in their sleep. Somebody died behind AIDS. Somebody died behind cancer. Somebody died. And if you woke up this morning, you ought to be rejoicing as you get out of your bed. Because it's getting worse and worse. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And this last will say, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I want mine to be the kingdom of heaven that John spoke about that's going to be on this earth, the new heaven on earth. I want to be there and I want y'all to be a part. God said he didn't want none of his people to perish, period. You can choose to go the other way. But my choice is going to be with the Lord. And with that being said, let me get on out of here. May God bless you. May God keep you. But this is my prayer that we start getting ready because time is ticking. I tell people it's, it's like being in a taxi cab. That meter going to keep running whether you're going somewhere or not. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that he is Lord. God bless you, you too, family.